And hello fellow Tigers, Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks and today we are in my new toy tier 10 Swedish heavy tank the Kranvarn. Yes guys I am done with the stupid machine contract yeah that has been going on for quite a while but finally it's finished now you probably thought you would see some machine play on my channel in the near future it will come up eventually I will probably make a video on the machine but honestly guys I'm not too impressed about that tank I don't know what it is maybe playstyle is just not my cup of tea it's hard to put a finger on it although I gotta tell you Kranvan I started to like this tank a lot I did I mean my opinion in the past was always that French auto loaders are better than Swedish auto loaders not anymore boys and girls in today's meta actually Swedish auto loaders are better I think just because you get a little bit of armor with this thing I know the gun is not as accurate as French auto loaders but the fact that if you go hold down with your minus 12 degrees of gun depression it's a freaking monster this tank is a monster and my current reload sitting at about 31 seconds actually below 31 seconds which is really really good I mean not spectacular but really good so let's uh, quickly take a look at stats of this tank the penetration values on the gun we're looking at 252 millimeters of penetration with standard APCR shells yes they are APCR shells they seem kind of sluggish maybe uh, shell velocity doesn't seem as fast as on French auto loaders but it's okay you gotta give it a little bit of a lead now the premium shells are heat and you're looking at 300 millimeters of penetration with heat shells which is quite good if you find yourself against heavily you know armored opposition then yeah these shells will definitely come handy to you game time that's at about two and a half seconds could be a bit better but you know can't argue with the rammer third stabs this aim time will be better and i'm currently running fence as a third equipment option on this vehicle accuracy of 0.36 meters which is not the greatest could be better but it's livable gun depression like i mentioned before 12 degrees which is quite fantastic now you can see me here firing at the conqueror's top plate and i was trying different weak spots uh, side armor so on and so forth with standard shell penetration of what was it 252 millimeters i couldn't pen one shot so what you're gonna see me here i'm gonna switch to heat rounds but in the meantime looks like this uh, centurion ax is decided to yellow round here so i'm not reloaded yet what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this track so that way we can get some uh, assisted damage yum yum may as well and with this tank and speed that it has and a uh, little bit of weight you can actually run with this tank you'd be surprised it's not a bad tank at all so we switch to heat rounds now we're gonna poke over and see and let's see if we can penetrate this conqueror now the first shell actually goes in the bottom plate so that's not a good example the second one goes top plate right there the third one is it gonna go in yes top plate as well and the last shell unfortunately misses anyway going back to the specs of the tank now as far as the armor goes man turret armor 225 millimeters at the front and when you angle it with minus 12 minus 11 or minus 10 degrees of gun depression this armor basically becomes not penetrable the capolas on top of the turret are penetrable so be careful about that and they can be penetrated with lower penetration guns although they're so extremely hard to hit if you poke out quickly take your shots and poke back in it's going to be extremely difficult for the opposition to hit you as far as your hole goes don't count on it it's not the best hole you're looking at only about 90 millimeters at the front about 70 on the side so yeah the, the hole is paper so don't count on bouncing any shells now one thing that's really wonderful about this tank is mobility it's absolutely fantastic engine power of 700 hp but this tank gets up to 60 kilometers an hour so yes the mobility can get you in trouble with this tank you got to be really careful if you know early positions on the maps which i'm going to show you in the three games that i'm showing you today they're very early positions where you can rack some damage and use your minus 12 degrees of gun depression early positions are great where you have to come up unload your clip and run away but be careful 
because after you unload your clip and you run into multiple tanks on the opposing side you're gonna have to run off because you do have 30 second reload so you have to be careful about that now as you can see we're losing quite comfortably in this game <laughs> which is uh, lately a common theme in world of tanks and i poke over the hill and uh, i see one two three four five six <laughs> seven seven beautiful tanks heading my way plus light tanks surrounding me at the moment this guy tries to run me i don't know what he was thinking but i appreciate the extra damage we're going to try to put a shell into him and I'll let you run off bro i don't think so we put a shell into him but my days are numbered so i'm gonna probably Exhale in a second. I'm gonna try to put one more shell into this chisel, but unfortunately, yeah, these are the teams we're running into nowadays. Uh, it's ridiculous. Like, I had early position, we engaged these guys fast. With Cran Run, it's beautiful because you can actually try to clear the flank with the other loader, so you know you're gonna run into light tanks, medium tanks potentially. So, that's what I was trying to do in this game. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Anyway, let's skip to the next game of the evening. And this time we are map Great Wall. Again, we're in a tier 10 battle. Duh. <laughs> Obviously, space. There is no artillery in play, which is actually all the three games I'm showing you today don't have artillery in play, which is fantastic. Isn't that great? And another beautiful position on this map with no artillery. Um, and you have to pay attention to that because if there's artillery then you'll be prepared to get shelled in this position but because there's no artillery in this game early position at J2 is absolutely magnifico for this tank absolutely with minus 12 degrees of gun depression you can get some very early damage so that's what we're gonna head up we're gonna head up there and I should be the first one up there well light tank really should be but I guess he got a late start so I'm gonna try to catch these guys off guard that are coming across and trying to get into position J1. So I don't know what to expect at this point in time, but hopefully we can run into some heavy armor and chew some uh, health off of these guys as quickly as we can. So we're gonna poke over here and uh, we're gonna spot, let's see, T125, there we go. There's a chieftain there as well. I was thinking, should I be aiming at him? But I chose E5 as a priority. Chieftain puts a shell into me, but unfortunately for him, he presents his drive wheel to me. So we're gonna put one shell into the drive wheel, second shell into the drive wheel, and just like that, we juice these guys for 1621 HP, which is a very successful clip. By the way, guys, look at these googly eyes. My goodness, <laughs> those googly eyes looking you in the face. Um, I got comments about this already. It's just amazing. You're looking at those googly eyes and you know there's no way you're penetrating them. <laughs> uh, that's why I put them on this tank. I thought it was so cool. Anyway, we almost reloaded. We're going to try to find a shot at this chieftain. We're going to look for a turret ring shot. Can we find it? Yes, we can. We take him out of the game and we're going to move forward. And I'm going to be jostling kind of for position with this chieftain. A little bit i was hoping i'll bump him here because i wanted him to give me a little bit of room to show him that i want to be on the inside i have a better gun depression than him so i can be on the inside he could be sitting more on the outside here we track the e5 that's the way to play out of loaders you track them once you penetrate the next two shells or next three shells whatever so another successful clip and we're currently sitting at 2.6k damage now take a look at this guy this guy is going to be something first of all he's got no gun depression Second, he's got no armor whatsoever. What is he doing? He's squeezing in front of Chieftain. He's squeezing in front of me, trying to get a shot, and he gets slaughtered. Guys, don't do that. Scorpion is a... And, and what does he do now? He's just running into me. I don't know what the hell he's doing. He's stopping me from getting my damage. That's what the problem is. And Chieftain took my position at this point in time, and I can't get in. Anyway, when you're a lightly armored vehicle like this, guys, try to play from a distance. Try to not pay attention to yourselves. I guess that's the main thing. Um, yeah, that's all I can uh, all I can tell you. Anyway, we're trying to use our gun depression. We're looking for shots at this French heavy tank. We tried to aim at the Capola. It didn't work out. Another shell bounces his Capola. Finally, the last or third shell hits him and takes him out of the game. So 
before moving forward, I think I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm, I'm being a bit wary here. I don't know what's sitting in a in a background over there. So I decided to go for a reload, but scoot in behind my tanks. And behind this hill over here, as you can see, there's a trailer. It's a Borsig, and last thing you want to do is get hit by a big gun like that. So I'm just gonna drop here. I know he's there. So I'm just gonna wait until I finish my reload. We're gonna pre-aim at him. And once he becomes visible, even if he didn't become visible, I would have taken a free blind shot at him. But unfortunately, before I reload, he gets taken out of the game. So we're gonna continue progressing. At the same time, uh, the opposing team won the other flank and they'll be going on to our cap. Now guys, on this map, um, south, east or oh sorry southwest is where the game really happens it's where you win or lose the game because by the time you get up to a zero and win that flank usually this flank on this side falls so i mean i would strongly recommend that when you play on this map go down to southwest positions either where i'm going right now or position k1 or j2 because these positions are the best usually the team that goes the other way loses this game so anyway we're gonna try to get some extra damage here the super conqueror he cannot pen me so he hits my gun and get used to that people be hitting your gun most of the time so i'm only carrying one repair kit on this tank right now i might actually consider carrying couple in the future because of the gun getting broken as you can see in this game also i'm not carrying any heat rounds this was one of the first games post the update and I think I didn't have heat rounds I had heat rounds loaded initially in this tank when I bought it but they were gone so it basically forced me to use just uh, standard rounds but it doesn't matter actually the shots I was taking the weak spots I was aiming at were pretty good so I didn't really need heat rounds in this game I wasn't running into really heavily armored opposition so that was good so we're gonna come and try to put some shells into this IS-7. That was the idea anyway. But at the same time, oh, hello. Full health chieftain. So what are we gonna do? Step and repeat. We're gonna track him and then we're gonna juice him. And that's how you play Kranvan. Beautiful. We take him out of the game. And yeah, that's how we're gonna end it. I don't think we're gonna reload in time in order to engage this IS-7. So... That's the way it's gonna end. But hey, pretty decent result. We what picked up 5k damage, close to 5k damage. Look at those googly eyes. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, almost 5k damage with about 900 assisted or almost 1k assisted. Some blocked because of uh, that turret, obviously. Anyway, let's take a look at the end plates. So yeah. 3 kills, uh, we had 1200 blocked, 5k damage, eh, close to, you know, 6k combined, pretty nice game, nothing spectacular, I just had a steady run in this thing, I didn't have any extraordinary games, I'm sure they will come eventually, but not yet, you know, that tank, like I said, you can get early damage in this tank because of the mobility, and also you can get late damage because of mobility as well so you can get to final kills much quicker than anybody else can anyway um as you can see chieftain finished first he got first to some of the shots because of the you know scorpion and whatever i had trouble getting in because uh, probably my damage number would have been a little bit higher but not that much higher anyway let's skip to the last game of the evening the last game is on map northwest again there's no artillery in play which is absolutely spectacular for this tank because the biggest problem for this tank is artillery you can get easily one shot especially when the shell lands on your engine deck over here so yeah you have to find yourself already safe positions when already is in play or just take risks because there's no other way to do it anyway we're gonna get ourselves into a very aggressive position which is j zero around that area that corner now normally I wouldn't go to that corner because of artillery but artillery is not in the game it gives you freedom to operate there hold down and that's exactly what I'm gonna do and we're gonna try to catch these guys that are coming or using J line to approach location H 
nine. So that way we can catch them off guard, use our gun depression and get some early damage, right? That's exactly what we're trying to do. Now, one thing that you're gonna find me do here is hack the wall on the right hand side as much as possible so that um, the hole is not visible. I do that with all of my uh, tanks that have really good gun depression. But the problem with doing that is that you slip off the rock. And that's what you see me do there. I'm trying to get a good position, but I'm slipping all the time. That's why my aim is kind of scattered. And that's what you see there. So it's not my, uh, <laughs> it's not my poor aiming. Trust me, guys. It's that hill. It's so slippery. I'm slipping off of it. Um, now, if I was a little bit lower, more to the left... I could have my lower plate visible and I, the last thing I want to do is do that so yeah it's a trade-off you slip off the rock you lose a little bit of your aim but I still managed to get it to work and we came up with what 1700 over 1700 damage very early in the game anyway we're on a reload we're gonna do exact same thing we're gonna poke out but this time we're gonna run into the E4 I actually tried to hit that uh, defender earlier but E4 showed up and we want to put some shots into the E4, definitely very dangerous tank. Now, this 113 is presenting a really good angle. The only shot I have is either drive wheel or under his side skirt. And the under side skirt shot is very difficult, so that didn't come off. Now I'm going to try to back off because I know this E5 is going to try to push us. I'm kind of blocking this Death Star, but I know he will reload before me. And I don't want to take any shots of damage at this point in time. It's early in the game. Although we're winning, I'm playing it really cautious and like I said, Death Star already reloaded. So now he's backing up and I'm gonna go in front of him so that E5 hopefully doesn't pay attention to our Death Star. He does shoot our Death Star, which I really appreciate. So I put one shot of damage into him. We track him in the second shot and we're gonna try to take him out on the third shot. I was hoping the second shot would uh, damage him, but it didn't. So I take one shot in the process, but who cares? I unload my clip into him. So I pay attention to fire distance over there. That 113 is still paying attention to me. <laughs> He's afraid of me. He's not fighting. But I'm trying to find the last shell into that drive wheel. And I can't. And unfortunately he puts two shells into me. But at this point in time, I don't think it matters. I think the game is pretty much over. That 113, instead of worrying about me, he should probably be pushing further into that location at H9. So we spot this T-57, we back in, in time, and T-57 gets taken out, so we get some assisted damage for that. Now we're gonna pull out, there's one more tank on this side here, I think it's the, yeah, the German P-100. So we're gonna put one shell into him, here we're gonna try to track him, we track him in place and damage him. Now look at this shot, you know what, no comment, that should have been a pen, that should have been a pen. APCR into the drive wheel. That should have been a pen. And that's, I don't know what's happening with this game, but that's exactly what's happening with this game. Anyway, late damage, and that's what we're gonna try to get to. That medium tank is gonna get taken out, but fortunately, there is another tank remaining that's gonna pop up in a split second here as a tortoise, and he will be full health. I don't know how he did that. He's still full health, and the game is over. So we're gonna take full advantage off of that we're gonna try to cross over that hill over here use our gun depression and take him out of the game now going for damage here so trying to aim quite accurately but look what this game does to me no space is not getting no damage and these are my games a lot of my games i aim my shots pretty good and that's what happens i don't know what's with this meta guys sucks the back sometimes but it is what it is and look at those googly eyes yet again just wonderful anyway i'm loving this tank absolutely loving this tank i did enjoy emil 2 but i played it at a point where i thought french auto loaders were better i changed my mind now in this meta actually this tank is so much more uh, reliable than any of the french auto loaders so even though they have better uh, guns with better accuracy I would still pick Cranvan and Emil 2. If you're going for auto loaders, guys, I would recommend these tanks quite a bit, honestly. So we finished with over 5k damage. We had a little bit of assisted damage as well, which brings total to over 6k combined. 
we fired 19 shots we had 19 direct hits and 13 penetrations anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video that's it for today until next time happy tanking space bundle check it out